I'm super excited about it. And uh, the reason I am and a lot of people aren't is that you have to understand the backstory and how these regulations have come about. We had the engine regulations announced really early, obviously, because that's one of the longest lead time aspects of these cars to get these new power units working. And I think we've ended up with a big compromise in the power unit that I am personally not super happy about, but in a case it's, a, you know, you've got to get all of the people invested into this. So we've, you know, we've lost the MGUH and we didn't gain the front axle um, regenerative braking uh, hybrid system, which I think was a, a, a big loss in these regulations. But then we come to the aero regulations. A lot of people think these aero regulations, which were published quite late, were a reaction to problems with this engine. And that's not the case. The reason we have the engine set up as it is with what may appear to be quite limited regenerative braking capability, you know, in terms of taking energy under um, uh, braking, is that it was always going to be that way because we knew on the straights that we're going to have this adaptive aero where the wings will flatten out on every straight under driver control, it's not going to be like DRS where you only get it at limited time. You get this flattening of the wings all of the time to reduce drag, and that offsets the design of the engine. So the two have always just been designed to work together. And I think we're going to find teams working with, you know, uh, how you recover and deploy energy from the engine, how they're going to work with these active aerodynamics to create some quite interesting ways of generating lap time and being quite tactical during races. So I think we're actually going to be in for a really interesting development phase uh, with these cars. And we shouldn't have some of the headaches that we had with the 2022 regulations with you know the ground effects and the bouncing with the suspension because they've gone back to a slightly more benign floor a floor that's maybe not quite as powerful not so reliant on super low um ride heights how the teams are going to be able to recover so much uh, energy purely from the rear axle uh is going to be tricky but there's changes to the regulations they'll actually be able to slightly charge the car on the straights um they're effectively burning fuel to um recover energy which i don't think is a, a great look for the sport but you know, it, it was a, a workaround. The solution was to put the front regenerative braking on, but everyone was so scared that Audi had a head start on that from their world endurance cars that, um, that that got dropped from the regulations. You see it now in Formula E where they even have it as a four wheel drive coming out of the corners. It's a big, a big loss for Formula One. But yeah, these engines, I mean, I think they're still going to be interesting. They're going to be much simpler. Um, it's going to be much harder to get performance out of them. And I think everyone's worried about one team or another not succeeding or over succeeding with this engine generation. Um, we've got to remember, we're going to have a lot more engine manufacturers coming into this sport now with these new rules, which we have to be excited about because we've only had, well, three initially and then four. But we have Audi, um, Cadillac and Honda and Red Bull, which were one entity, are now going to be obviously split into two with the new regulations. So we've got a whole heap of engine manufacturers. Well, they're going to be a, a lot bigger um, physically and in terms of the performance. Uh, one of the, my biggest frustrations under the whole of Formula One's hybrid technology, going back, what, to 2009 now, if you think about it, um, is how little the teams and the manufacturers have spoken about this incredible technology. Um, I've been lucky to speak to some of the people um, involved in these projects. And, you know, battery technology is still something a lot of us are still trying to get our head around in terms of understanding you know, the, the key metrics, the key factors that make a battery so good. Um, in comparison to what we would know about maybe petrol and combustion engines. Um, but these batteries are absolutely incredible. They've got so much smaller and lighter. You know, they really are at the limit of the regulations. At the moment, it's just 20 kilograms of cells and you're getting you know, so much performance out of them that, you know, you, you wouldn't find that performance anywhere else. How they're man able to cool these uh, batteries as well, obviously, because you've got so much energy going in and then going straight back out again. And uh, yeah, 2026 offers a, a big challenge for the teams, uh, one that I don't doubt everyone will achieve because we don't tend to have a lot of issues with the batteries under the current regulations. Um, but they will be even higher stressed under the 2026 rules.